Good morning, everybody. All right, a lot of people are away on vacation, you know, because they don't like church, you know, they don't like Pastor Kim, you know, they just want to backslide. Amen. They use the excuse that I got to go soul winning at Russia, you know, or stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Amen. Well, anyway, hey, let's pray for our brethren, right, who are gone, that they catch some souls, pass out some tracks, win some fish. Like I told you before, if you're going to save 10 people from hell, go ahead and skip church if you're going to do that one. Okay, please take out your red hymnal. Please take out your red hymnal. Let's glorify our king today. Let's sing, To God Be the Glory. To God Be the Glory. 449, 449, please. 449. To God be the glory because he's done so many great things for us. Yes, sir. 449. Give him the glory. Here we go. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the light gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes. Damn, moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Bless God, amen. amen. All right. Let's tell, let's tell a lot of things to Jesus today. I don't know about you, but I must tell Jesus today. Open up your red hymnal to 344. 344. So much to tell him, amen? So much to tell him. I don't know about you, but when you, when I die and go to heaven, there's a lot I want to ask him, talk to him about, and yes, tell sir. him how much, how many thanksgiving and praises I just want to thank him for. 344. For time's sake, we will uh, skip verse 2. Verse 2, we will skip. Here we go. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior, one who can 
help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, he all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me over the world of victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me. remember this song, but please stand, please stand, page 391, 391, one flag we follow, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, Yay, his banner, Lord. his Woo! flag that is waving, we will go underneath and wave it proud and high for the whole world to see, yes, sir. that's yes. what you were doing at Street Preaching, right, Amen. you were waving a flag so yes, that sir. everybody else can see, and some of you weren't content with one spot. You had to go to different spots so that we can show them all the flags around. Yes, Lord. That's how it should be. All right. So obviously we're not going to do the coda at the end because I know some of you can't do that uh, high part, okay? All right. Here we go. I sought a flag to follow, a cause for which to stand. I sought a valiant leader who could my love command. I sought a stirring challenge, some noble work to try, to give my life fulfillment, my dreams to satisfy. I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. I sought a ringing answer for all my doubts inside. A torch of truth uplifted my searching steps to guide. I sought a word of wisdom, a true authority. I sought to know life's purpose, to solve its mystery. I found them all in Jesus, the light, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him. I sought for peace and pardon, for freedom from my fears. I sought a hope to cling to beyond these passing years. I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. Amen. All right, let's start off with a word of prayer. God, my Father, thank you so much for that blood, that precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our flag's color is red, Lord, because of that precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we're under that. That flag has covered us, Lord. That flag has covered us. So the devil can't see anything black of sin within our souls. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, that you brought us all here united under one banner and one flag. 
and that is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't see Gene Kim. You don't see Brother Emilio or Brother Tom. You don't see Brother Rob or anybody else, Lord. You only see Jesus Christ within us, the righteousness and the holiness of Jesus Christ. And so, Heavenly Father, as holy saints, please accept our praise as we worship you. And as we hear your preaching, may lives be changed and the fellowship be sweet. Because we are all one body of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. All right, please take out your white hymnal. Please take out your white hymnal. Please turn to your white hymnals to page 40. Your white hymnal to page 40. And uh, time has already flown so quickly, so what we'll do is that we're going to have to sing verse 1 and verse 4. Verse 1 oh, and no. verse 4. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna skip verse two. That's it. All right. So we'll do Woo! it. Right. All right. So we'll skip Amen. verse two. Okay. All right. One, three, and four. <clears throat> One, three, and four. Here we go. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Then I know the sins of earth beset on every hand. Doubt and fear and things. forget about the mic this time <laughs> all right brother nice to have you here god bless all of you who came god bless all of you who couldn't make it god bless all of you online amen <laughs> thank you for supporting us for all of those online it really means a lot to us so i'll give you give you guys all the announcements today monday night bible study will be at 8 p.m at pastor's place let him know if you need his address he will give it to you and discipleship will be an hour earlier at 7 p.m. For those of you who know, we have a YouTube channel, and we also have those discipleship videos, so make sure you watch them if you want to be discipled. 
really helpful and it's a great resource. It's also, I think, a requirement for discipleship, so please watch them. Um, Sunday, next Sunday will be visitation at 10.30 a.m. Brother Tom will not lead you astray this time. I have the right address. We left off at some uh, 3033 Gay Avenue, and I will tell you again, so make sure if you don't know the address, text me. I will text you again, but lest I forget, just text me. <laughs> just let me know if you need the address, brother, and I will let you know. Um, Saturday Fellowship, actually, this just this upcoming Saturday, we'll have fellowship at Pastor's Place at 7 p.m. If you can make it, it's going to be a potluck. We're going to bring, we're going to all bring some sort of food, and uh, Pastor will probably baptize us with fire with that soup. You know, I don't know how he's going to do it this time, but we'll see. <laughs> Summer camp will be from July 30th to August 3rd for those of you who can make it. If you need more information about what to bring and what the schedule is like, um, please look at the flyer at bbcenglish.org that's our english website for our ministry so they'll have the flyer with like whatever you need for the packing list the location the address um, all that good stuff our memory verses will be this week psalms chapter 23 verses 1 to 3 and please turn there if you could but i can also read it to you if i can't turn there quickly but um but I will read you Psalms chapter 23, verses 1 to 3. So we're, we're going to memorize the whole chapter again, but we're just memorizing 1 to 3 right now. So let's get on and read it. And this is a Psalm of David. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So as you can see, the Lord takes care of his own. He lets us fly down in green pastures, and he leads us beside the waters. And if that's not enough, he even helps you get on the right path. It says he leads me, leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake, because we should be living for his namesake. Amen? Good, great verses to memorize. I hope you can keep up with it. Hopefully next week I'll have most of it memorized, and we can have a recital competition, I don't know, to encourage the brethren. I know Sister Barbara's always on top of it, so it's going to be great. Amen? <laughs> And with that, I will pass it over to Pastor. I believe we have a special today. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. fly away up at the rapture like Superman and when we come down at the second advent we come down like the Lone Ranger all right amen can't wait for that day if brother Jack can come forward and take up the Lord's offering for us and then he can ask God's blessing upon the church service as well with a word of prayer dear Heavenly Father we thank you for the gathering today of fellowship in this service Lord amen. May you bless this service and give uh, Pastor Holy Spirit unction. May he teach his word, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we ask you to watch over anyone that's on their way here to get them here safely. And watch yes, over God. the brothers and sisters who are not here in a way, uh, uh, in faraway places, Lord. And we ask that uh, the gifts that we receive today, uh, 
he asked that may be used for your glory and honor. Amen. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Psalms chapter 150, please. Psalms chapter 150. So good to see our new members again and to see our regular members as usual. It's always good to see everyone here. Amen. I hope that you all get blessed by today's preaching. This is actually one of my favorite sermons, and I hope that will be a blessing to you. Sermons that I love have to do with stories. That's what I love the most, is that it has to do with testimonies and stories of different men of God throughout past history. I love that. I think you all heard my teaching or watched it, History of Bible Believers. That has been my pinnacle favorite and has been, I know, life-changing to a lot of others as well. Some members ended up in our church because of that video, if I recall. So I'm going to give you another sermon on that one. Psalms chapter 150, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp, praise him the, with the timbrel and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. In this passage, we see that the psalmist, he writes about the importance of praising our Lord. And I don't know if any of you, when you come to church, you realize the importance of singing songs. Each and every song has a story behind it, a testimony, meaning and heart behind every, every hymn, every song that we sing. And the Lord has used this to touch and change literally millions, and I mean millions of lives. And you got to realize this, is that these songs are still sung today, not only in America, but in different countries and continents around the world, in different languages, because let all that hath breath praise the Lord. And I pr pray that today's preaching will touch your heart, will be an excitement and an incredible blessing to you about each and every song that you sing. One thing I learned is this, it doesn't matter if it's old or recent, nothing's too old fashioned. Every song, I hope you paid attention to the words when you're singing it, the words, each and every word has a powerful meaning. Today my title is Greatest Hits in Music, let's pray. Wash away my sins with your holy blood, Heavenly Father, and fill within me the power of your spirit. I pray today's preaching will be a blessing to the hearers and glorify you more than ever before. God, the sermon is nothing. Gene Kim is nothing. Everything is nothing. If you're not in it, if people's hearts are not moved within it, so I pray that the Holy Spirit will take full control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Luke chapter 1. Please turn to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. The first point, the first point is because of deliverance. Because of deliverance. That's the reason why we sing to the Lord. Because he delivered you from a burning hell. Amen. Amen. Because he saved your worthless hide from a burning hell. Amen. He delivered you out of there. That's why you can sing a song praising the name of Jesus Christ. Why should I sing a song to him? You know why? He delivered you. Amen. Of course you, su you should sing to him. Of course you, su you should say, worthy is a lamb. Of course you should say, praise the Lord. You know why? He delivered your soul from a burning hell when you weren't worth a hill of beans, man. Because of deliverance. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 46. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Why? And my spirit hath rejoiced. Why? In God my Savior. 
See, Mary can't save you. Did you hear what I just said? Mary can't save you, you bunch of Catholics Mary! out there. Mary can't save your soul. Mary realized she had a Savior, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Mary realized that I need a Savior, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And she realized that she's a sinner in need of a Savior. The heretical teaching of Immaculate Conception is a lie. That is a lie straight Amen. from the pits of hell. Mary needed a savior. Muhammad needed a savior. Amen. Buddha needed a savior. Amen. Confucius needed a savior. Mary Baker Eddy, she needed a savior. Ellen G. White, she Amen. needed a savior. Jean Kim needed a savior. Amen. You, my friend, needed a savior. And that's the reason why Jesus Christ came onto this earth and died on an old rugged cross, Amen. delivered your soul and my soul from the flames of hell and given us heaven for all eternity. Right. You don't think that after that that I can't sing one tune to my Savior, Jesus Christ? You think that some of you, that when you got up to sing, I'll fly away, you can't sing that song after he saved your soul, delivered you from sin, from hell, from death, from eternal damnation? It's because of deliverance. There was a man named Alfred Ackley, and he always held evangelistic meetings and this man, he would get souls saved and people on the altar and people would be moved. But one time, there was a lost Jew, a lost Jew who approached Alfred Ackley. And he scoffed him and he said, why should I worship a dead Jew? Why should I worship a dead Jew? You know what his answer was? I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives! Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. To that Jew who asked him, you ask me how I know he lives. He he's not dead he lives and he lives within my heart that's why we sing these songs because he delivered your soul and my soul from hell and he's not a dead savior he's a living savior boy I bet you that you never heard an answer like that before did he it was a young man who had a gun in his pocket and he was going to shoot himself at the edge of the bridge and he couldn't take life anymore he's all miserable and he wanted to end everything, and he thought that there was nothing worth living. No one could love him. No one could solve his problems. And he was walking toward where the bridge was located, and he planned to be at the edge of the bridge, shoot his brains out, and let his body fall into the river. Just when he arrived at the bridge, he just coincidentally just so happened to pass by a church and you can imagine him, you can picture him sobbing and putting his hands in his pocket and slouching down and being so depressed. And then he passed by a church building and then all of a sudden he heard the tune of this song. The cross upon which Jesus died is a shelter in which we can hide. And its grace so free is sufficient for me. And deep is its fountain, as wide as the sea. Hey, you listening? There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. 
Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Threw that gun away, and he got saved, and he became an evangelist, and used that song for his altar calls, I bet you. <laughs> Who would have thought the person who committed suicide became a preaching evangelist because he realized that there's always room, room for one more. Let me tell you something, folks. This is not Calvinism. Calvinism is, from the, is a doctrine from the pits of hell, Amen. and I'm going to tell you something. God always has room for one more, and you can go in and receive Jesus Christ for your salvation. You don't have to say, oh, what am I? I am unworthy, and I can't receive him. Hey, he opens his door for you. You don't need some kind of sovereign, Amen. irresistible grace, some kind of nut job named Calvin to tell you what to do, that you can get saved. God invites you to come in and receive his son for salvation. That's why you can sing. Now you realize there's so much to sing about Jesus Christ because he delivered your soul and my soul from hell. Amen. There was a little Welsh community, and it was raining a heavy storm within that area. And the Welsh vil villagers, they saw a ship that was about to hit the rocks. And there was a poor fellow clinging on a spar. The people knew he was going to die helplessly. So a pastor, he took out a horn, and he called out to that man who was clinging onto that spar. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Can you hear? Look to Jesus. Can you hear? And out of that thunderous noise, they heard that poor fellow. And he cried out, aye, aye, sir. And as the ship crashed and he fell into the ocean, they heard that poor fellow singing, Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly. While the nearer waters roll, while the tempest still is high. And as that wave crashed under him and he cried out, Hide me, O oh my Savior, hide till the storm of life is past. And as he sunk down deeper and deeper into the ocean, you can picture him continuing safe into the haven guide. Oh, receive my soul at last. You know where he was going after he died? He was at the loving arms of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know why we can sing songs? Because that storm does not have to be our end. He delivered us from that storm. He delivered us from death. Because passed from death unto life, that's the reason why we sing hymns. Because it does. we do not have to end. The end of our lives does not have to be the Grim Reaper. It does not have to be that large, tall ocean. If somebody were to shoot your brains out, you don't have to have that kind of pitiful end. There's a life beyond that. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. He delivered us from the grave and from hell. That's why we can sing songs to him. He conquered death and hell. He's got the keys of death and hell. That's why you don't think that I can't sing even one verse to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How often, how often have you sung stupid Taylor Swift songs and Britney the Horse Spears song, and we can't even sing one verse to the Savior who delivered your soul from hell? You've heard about the famous sinking of the Titanic and that big, humongous ship, the Titanic. People thought that it was impregnable, that it will not sink, that it was indestructible. But what happened, it just went through a little bit of an iceberg and then tore a hole, and the Titanic was sinking, and it was sinking. And even secular people, historians, Hollywood producers, cannot neglect this part of the story in the Titanic. 
as people fell off the ship. People were screaming and dying and then freezing to death in the ocean. A bunch of musicians, they got together and they were going to play a song. They played some happy music and you can imagine them playing probably some jazz and some worldly music and people were trying to drown their sorrows with that. But that wasn't the final music they played, the final one that they played because they knew that someone was more important to deliver their souls from hell. The violinists, the celloists, the musicians all got together and they played Nearer, my God, to thee, nearer to thee, e'en though it be across that raiseth me. Still all my song shall be nearer, my God, to thee, nearer, my God, to thee, nearer to thee. You know what those musicians did? They planted a seed, and all those people heard that. And as they were screaming, and then they were trying to find a place to swim to, and then they were uh, clinging on to dear life, and they were freezing in the ocean, there's a guy who produced the fr fruit. He was swimming across a person, and he shouted out, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And he went to this one guy who was going to drown. And then the guy said, Here, uh, I'll give you my life jacket. I'm ready to die. You're not. Believe on the Lord. And then he buckled that. Hey, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, sir, and thou shalt be saved. And then he said, I got to go keep swimming. And then he was swimming on to other people because the seed was planted near my God to thee. And people were thinking about eternity. Some Bible believers, some preacher took that as advantage that, hey, I'm going to win some soul. Believe on the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ and thou shalt be Amen. saved. He died. His last words when he died was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I can picture him shouting that out. And as he, and as he died, when he looked up at heaven, he probably just kept saying, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. And he was freezing to death, and he was going to die, and he just kept saying it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then when he opened up his eyes, he went, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And then all the saints surrounding the throne, they were like saying, they were like saying, hey, we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are saved. All right, welcome. Like, yes, and he went to the throne of glory, shouting the victory. Wow. And you can't sing. You can't put a. You can't put your heart in this song. You need some stupid drum beat. You need some stupid electric guitar. You need some guy and girl to dress up like a whore so that you can pay attention and then oh, and put a lot of clicks on the music. You know, on YouTube, this sermon should get the most hits. Not some stupid Taylor Swift song. Not some stupid Lady Gaga song. Not some NFL halftime show. That this sh this sermon should get the most clicks. This kind of song sickened, makes me angry, makes me angry that the devil will steal the blood and the lives and the sweat of people who wrote words to glorify God and that he replaced it with lights, he replaced it with action, violence, Amen. and sex, and he replaced it with his garbage of an African voodoo drumbeat behind. I, I get upset with that. I am disgusted with that. Oh, wickedness, oh, wickedness, and you can't, you, you, you can't enjoy the song that you're singing. You know, especially, I want to stress this about young people too. Young people, when you listen, when you sing the hymn, it is so sad that you would get engrossed in the world's kind of music, that wicked music, rather than the songs of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we live in that generation. We live in that sad, sad generation. Look at Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, and we will look at verse 23, Acts chapter 16, and we will read verse 23. My second point is because of depression, because of depression. That's why you can sing hymns. You know why? 
Because when you're going through depressing, hard times, you got the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who got your back, who will hold you up, and he will raise you up on higher ground. That's why we can sing these hymns. Acts chapter 16, and we will read verse 23. And when they had lain many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So Paul and Silas, man, you talk about a depressing moment. They were beaten for Jesus in prison. They had it made. You think that your life is tough and you're depressed. Did you get beaten for Jesus? Did you get in prison for Jesus? You know what these people did in their depressing moment? At verse 25, and at midnight. See, midnight, midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Bless God, that's how it ought to be. You ought to be singing praises to the Lord Jesus Christ when you're sad and when you're down. Not going to some little bar and hearing some kind of blues to build up your depression even more. That's why it's called blues. You know why? You got the blues. And that's why you have to drink down that alcohol to make yourself feel better. And then get, get, get something running in your blood and to feel good. And my brother and sister in Christ, God gave you a voice that you can lift up to him during your hard times. There was a man named Horatio G. Spafford, and this man, he was doing the Lord's work, preaching, getting souls saved, living, a, raising up a godly wife and children. And then his wife and several of his children, they went out at sea. And while they were traveling out at sea, that man who loved the Lord Jesus Christ, who never did anything wrong, heard that the ship sank and his wife and several of his children were drowned at sea, dead and gone. And that man, you can imagine all the sorrow welling up in his heart and the tears that flowed about the sea and the river that took away his loved one's life. But all he could do with that emotion filling up, all he could do is take out a pen and write the words, when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say what with your wife and your children drowned at sea it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well yes all will be well with my soul that's what he did and that's why he can write this, these next verses. <laughs> My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, it gets even better. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. I'm going to see my wife, my children, and most of all you, Jesus. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well yes all will be So 
You think that next time you sing this, uh, you'll put more meaning into it? You think the next time you'll sing this, you won't drag your dead carcass into church? You think the next time you'll sing this, you won't get depressed about how sad and miserable your life is? Did you have a wife and several children who drowned out at sea? Man, praise the Lord. These are the greatest hits in music. These are the greatest hits in music. Not the Backstreet Bombs, not Britney Spears, not Lady Gaga, Gaga, Ga, and not any of these guys. It's Jesus Christ. It's always about Jesus Christ. They're the greatest hits in music. I don't know why Vevo has millions of hits in those. It's not stupid Gangnam style where it hits a billion hits. It should be Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ, not some stupid Asian who danced like an idiot. There's a guy named Joseph Scriven, and he was born in Ireland. And he graduated from college, and he was engaged to a beautiful woman. This guy, he had it made. He's like many of you who got the future, job, woman, everything set up. But you know what happened? On the eve of their wedding, his fiance drowned to death. Joseph Scriven, he was overwhelmed with grief. <clears throat> he went to Canada and he devoted his life to help the underprivileged and he focused on them, gave them clothes and shared his food with them. Later on, his mother became ill and he had to take care of his mother. Now with all this, he had it made and now he just went down to the bottom. And that was his life and what loneliness, what grief. No friend who can fill up the sorrow but that grief made him, inspired him to write these words. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. <clears throat> what a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. <clears throat> That's why he wrote that song. Remember this, when you sing this song next time, remember, a man had to lose his lover to write this song for you to sing today. And, oh, I can't come to church, you know, and then you miss all the hymn singing when you come in. And then you go, oh, we have to sing this song, you know. Oh, why can't we sing? Why can't we sing something more lively? And you got to remember this, man. I don't care how old-fashioned or whatever it is. You got to realize this. Every you, you don't pay attention to the words, huh? Your flesh wants some kind of tune, doesn't it? That's what the devil wants. He wants you to listen to his music as a priority rather than the words. And that's why the word of God says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Should be the word because the word is focusing about him. Not some kind of fleshy beat that can get you going and all riled up and make you start crying and stuff like that. Should be the words. There was a person that named Robert, Robert, uh, Robert Robinson. And one day he lost the joy of his salvation. And he's like many saved Christians who got saved, but then they lost the joy and then they sought after the world to fill in the inner void of their sorrow and, and to find something to fill in the joy. That's what happens with some people, especially young people. Once they live their life as a Christian, they feel like there's something more out there that they can gain from the world and from sin. And so that's what Robert Robinson did. He, he wandered around the world and enjoyed all the pleasures of sin. But as a result, he felt miserable and guilty. Hoping to relieve his mind, he decided to travel a lot more. And in the course of his travels, he got acquainted with a young woman. And then, guess what? This woman, you won't believe what happened. <clears throat> she opened up a hymn, and then when she opened up a hymn, 
she showed that man the song and she asked him, what do you think the words of this hymn? And that man was under conviction. And then he kept avoiding the question. He tried to change the subject, but every time he tried to change the subject, because he was getting under conviction, and then the woman just kept pressing him like, no, 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 what do you think of this song? What do you think of the song? And then kept reminding him. Finally, the man couldn't take it anymore. He was just so much under conviction and he broke out crying. And as he broke out crying, he said, I am the man who wrote that hymn many years ago. I'd give anything to experience again the joy I knew back then. Hey, prodigal son, why don't you come back home, huh? Why don't you get back into focusing and serving Jesus Christ? And it's not in the world out there that you find joy. The joy was always in Jesus Christ all that time, but you forgot about him. Oh, the joy. The woman was so surprised and shocked, and she reassured him that those words that he wrote, streams of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. She assured him of that much. The song went, Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Some of you got saved and you don't experience the joy of the Lord. Maybe some of you need to sing this song a couple times and remind yourself of the joy that Jesus Christ had filled it in your life. What did he save you from? What did he answer your prayers about? What did he bless you with? What did he rescue from the filth and the dirt that you didn't have to jump into, but you yourself just jumped into it anyway think about what God did for you there was a man who loved to sing songs praising the Lord but then he felt a lot of pain in his left eye and then he went to the doctor and then the doctor sadly told him that you have cancer in your eye so we're going to have to remove that eye so the man went through surgery and lost his eye because of cancer. And then he had to put a patch over it. And then little children would laugh and say, look at that, that's, that's a pirate, mom, that's a pirate. And he received a nickname, which you would be surprised what it's called today, Patch the Pirate. They are a music organization now and he's still alive. Why? How did that happen? The, how that happened was he lost his eye. And what became a tragedy became a blessing. That's why he started his organization, Patch the Pirate. And so he wrote a song, rejoicing in the Lord no matter what the tragedy. He wrote, God never moves without purpose or plan when trying his servant and molding a man give thanks to the lord though your testing seems long in darkness he giveth a song oh rejoice in the lord he makes no mistakes he knoweth the end of each path that i take for when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. He came out fine gold. You lose an eye, you come up even finer gold for the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Revelation 5, please. Turn to Revelation chapter 5. And my last point is because of deification. Because of deification. And that's the most important thing why you should praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Because when we go up in heaven, you know what songs we're singing? 
Oh yeah, we can sing about songs about being bought by the blood. We can sing songs about Jesus Christ being there during our times of sorrow. But you know what the number one priority is when we go up there to sing? Because he's worthy. Because he's God. He is I am that I am. He is, not was or will be. He is. And it's because of that, that's why we're going to sing to him. You know why? Because you're not worth it. He's worth it. Amen. You ever seen some celebrity? Imagine a celebrity who made a song just about him or her. Do you think A lot of people will think that person is an arrogant jerk, right? They wouldn't sing those kind of songs. They would think, what a proud know-it-all. Some of them try to do so that they can become like God. But there is only one person who gets all those songs just about him. Oh, what an arrogant person. What a self-conceited person. What an egotistic person. You know what? It's all about him. He deserves all of that. All that attention should go to him. He is worthy of that. That's why literally millions, and I mean millions, would bow the knee and kiss the floor with their faces on the ground and sing, worthy is the lamb. Amen. Look at Revelation chapter 5. And look at verse 8, Revelation 5, verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four and twenty elders fell down, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song. And what is this new song? Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That's what you're going to sing, be singing. You're going to be singing worthy, 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 and all eternity is not enough to give him the worthiness. That's why when you sing these songs, especially, I don't know if you paid attention to the first songs we sing. The first hymns that we usually sing are called worship songs. And I don't care how old they are or how old the tune is. It's about him. There's a guy named Carl Boberg, and he was going to prepare a sermon. And he was on the southeast coast of Sweden. And he was walking through a thunderstorm to be prepared for a church meeting that was two miles away. <laughs> so while he was walking through that thunderstorm two miles down, and the thunder started roaring... And the rain poured heavily upon him. You know what he did? He wasn't whining to God about the weather. He was instead more in awe and majesty about the thunder and the rain and the awesome power of God. So in the middle of that thunderstorm, while he was walking for two miles, he could not help but to sing, Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder... Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear. There was no power in the blood and spoke against the power that just received so much attention. But he received, he received threats from his enemies and they tried to close him down. And actually, in the end, Handel did close down his theater. His enemies won, and he went, he went absent. He pretty much disappeared for a long time. And there was the end of the great Mr. Handel. But what happened is that there was a man named Jennings who just suddenly dropped by, and Handel did not expect any meetings. He was done writing music. And then Jennings was an irritating person who walked in. But Jennings said, I want you to make music for this oratorio. And then Handel heard that the name of the oratorio was the Messiah. When he heard that, his eyes widened up, and he said, I'll take it. And he took it. And you know what? He didn't eat anything. He drank only milk for three weeks. And he finished the entire Messiah, the entire Messiah, within three weeks. Wow. Wow. I mean, something was moving within his spirit when he did that. And then when he finished the piece, <clears throat> The opera opened up, and the king of England was there. And there was Handel's enemies. Handel's enemies, the prince of Wales and different nobilities, they were all of Handel's enemies. And they had to attend because the king of England was there. And so the king of England was there, and they played the Messiah. 
and you can hear those big bass drums rolling. And it went, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And oh, that drama rose up within the king of England, the king of England and all the nobles' bloods who were used to people honoring them and worshiping them. Now the attention was on Jesus Christ and they could not help but be in awe. And when they came to that finale, king of kings and lord of lords and then the king of england when he heard that line king of kings because that king was greater than any king on earth and that king of england he couldn't help it but he had to stand up he stood up in honor of the great king of kings that's why it's a tradition when you go to the opera houses when they play the hallelujah chorus people stand up so imagine this atheists and liberals who go over there they don't know what they're doing they just stand up <laughs> Oh, I don't worship God. I don't believe Jesus is this. Why are you standing then when they're playing the hallelujah chorus? Let's all go to the opera house of San Francisco. Let's, uh, I can't wait to see a homosexual, a liberal, or an atheist, or an agnostic over there, and they all stand up in the, what? Because our Lord God omnipotent reigneth. That's how God got the glory. And when he went, king of kings and lord of lords, the king of England stood up, and then all the people were like saying, he stands up. We got to stand up too. So then all of them stand up. Handle's enemies, they can't sit down because the big shot was standing. So they all stood up. The Prince of Wales stood up. They all stood up in honor of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you can imagine that finale as the drum rolled. Hallelujah. Because you know why? He is worthy. Our Lord God omnipotent reigneth. You think that was really good? I'll give you a better one than that. There was a man, he, his name was D.R. Van Sickle. And D.R. Van Sickle was not a Christian. He was period, not a Christian. And guess what, you know who was writing all those great songs? Before the Beatles and before the, these stupid Hollywood celebrities came out, you know who were the ones writing all the good music? It was the Christians. It was the Christians who were writing all the good music. And because of that, Van Sickle was tired of that. And he's like, you know what? I can prove to people that you don't have to be a Christian to write a good song. I'll show them. So he wrote a song. He wrote this song down. He's like, I'm going to show them. And he wrote this song. And <laughs> this is so funny. He wrote a, he wrote a astounding music piece, a great Christian song, giving glory to God. He's like, I'm going to show them. And this unsaved man finished writing that piece. And then it became a hit. And he's like, oh, these stupid Christians, they don't know. Look at them, man. I mean, see, I can prove to them that a non-Christian can write good music too. Look at me. And then what happened was he went inside this church that played that music in honor of what he did. And when he sat down and then he listened, he heard the choir singing the song that he wrote. And you know what happened? Something welled up within his spirit oh, yeah. when he heard them sing, all hail to thee, Emmanuel, we cast our crowns before thee. Let every heart obey thy will, and every voice adore thee. In praise to thee, our Savior King, the vibrant chords of heaven ring. And Go back the mighty strength. All hail, all hail, all hail, all hail, Emmanuel. Hail to the king we love so well, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Hail to the king we love so well, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Glory and honor and majesty, wisdom and power be unto thee, now and evermore. Hail to the king we love so well, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Hail to the king we love so well, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. And man, that flesh couldn't take it anymore, and that Holy Spirit was beating louder and louder. 
especially that line, King of kings and Lord of lords, all hail Emmanuel. That man finally bowed the knee and received Jesus Christ for his savior and gave him the glory that he deserved. This hymn, this hymn, which is in our white hymnal, this was written by a lost man, a lost man who got saved in Jesus Christ. And you think that these songs are worth nothing to you. What happened to our day and age? What happened? There is no real story, no real meaning like these songs. Man, oh, I love that third verse, oh man. I like it when we sing this at summer camp together, when all the young people start doing this and run around the room and throw songbooks and throw shoes and throw ties when we do this line. This third verse, oh, it riles me up. All hail to thee, Emmanuel, our risen King and Savior. Thy foes are vanquished, and thou art omnipotent forever. Death, sin, and hell no longer reign. And Satan's power is burst in twain. Eternal glory to thy name. All hail, all hail, all hail, all hail. All hail, Emmanuel. can say, Lord, as I close this service, and I sang all these songs to you is, amen. You are worthy. Every head bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. If the Lord spoke upon your heart, please feel free to come down on this altar's floor. Don't let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit move upon your heart, and you don't have to hinder the Spirit to come here on the altar's floor. If you want to pray in your seat, feel free to pray in your seat. We respect your privacy. But if the Holy Spirit moves upon your heart to come, don't hesitate to come. Oh, how worthy is our God. Oh, he is so worthy. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. I can sing that 20 times over that word. Hallelujah and hallelujah and hallelujah because he is all worthy. He deserves the glory, the honor, the power, the praise, the amens, to him be the glory. You know why you should sing? Because he delivered your soul from hell. You know why you should sing? Because during your times of sadness, he was there for you. Do you know why you should sing? Because, <laughs> so simple, he's just worthy, that's why. He's worthy, that's it. The greatest hits in music we ever had because of deliverance, because of depression, because of deification. I'm holding just one hymn book. I'm just holding one hymn book. And this one hymn book, this one hymn book has more than 500, more than 500 songs about a man named Jesus, some carpenter's son, huh? Some Jew, huh? Some person who's just a great teacher, huh? Wow, I'll tell you one thing, what a Jew. <laughs> what a carpenter's son. What a man. Boy, he fooled billions, didn't he? He fooled billions. That one name alone fooled billions to Worship him. Imagine. That's why songs can go endless. It's so funny. One of the largest religions in the world, such as Islam, don't have that many songs about Muhammad. A powerful religion that even affects politics, and they have power even in one state, Utah, Mormonism. They don't have that many on Joseph Smith. The world's largest religion, if not Islam, 
the world's largest religion, Catholicism, can't sing that much about the Virgin Mary. All they can do is just 20 times sing Ave Maria. That's, that's about it. <laughs> but what about Jesus Christ? There's so many endless songs about him. God, my Father, thank you so much that you gave us voices to sing. <laughs> I don't know why people <clears throat> don't want to sing or are afraid to sing. We are so unworthy to even use our voices to give you the glory, Lord. You could have used the birds. You could have been content with those four cherubs. And you had a fifth one who was made and created to sing. But God Almighty, may you get the glory in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone without works through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and he cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So he has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you. Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own defense department would survive its application. King James onlyism is double standards. Now there's a false doctrine out there called dispensationalism. Yeah, I, I don't believe one saved, always saved. 
The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. <laughs> But you don't want to get identified with the reproach of what really believing this Bible is all about. You know what these wicked left-wing liberal perverts want you to do? Legalizing the marijuana or homosexuality or if the whole entire world turns against the Lord. Is that person saved? Is that person on their way to heaven or hell? The common person has no thought of God in their mind. That people will leave the church over the color of the carpet. What's wrong with our churches? Why don't we have a closer walk with Jesus? Why isn't everybody running around like little Jesus is shouting and screaming and hollering? That thing you look in the mirror, it don't want to go street preaching. It don't want to read the Bible. It don't want to pray. It wants to watch TV and a bunch of other junk. A lot of you don't have it because you're lazy. That's why you don't have it. Because you won't work. That's why. Don't you know the Bible says, Whoa! Unto the wicked! I'll tell you, Jesus Christ loved you enough. He came down here, put up with your dirty ways. The wages of sin is death. When you offer somebody a gospel track, if uh, you're walking away and you see them throw it on the ground, that's not because they're afraid of what's in it. They know what's in it. No matter where you are today, turn to God and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God Almighty got me through and got me through for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years. You mess with that book, honey, I'll mess with you. Blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the man. Man. Oh, yeah. 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 Jesus Christ. 